Mark from Dirty Honey, and you're watching Alex on Alicia Media on YouTube. I'm I'm currently backstage pre-show with Dirty Honey and um, we're at Sheffield Corporation right now and I'm so excited to see what you guys have in store for us. I'm with the front man Mr. Mark LaBelle. How you doing? I'm good, no worse for wear. It's been a great uh, tour so far so. Amazing and I just want to get into all of that with you but I mean there are worse ways to spend a Sunday of course. <laughs> yeah. um, how would you normally spend a Sunday if you went on tour? Uh, if I wasn't on tour Sunday well in America, obviously, we watch real football, not uh, soccer. The American yeah, football. Yeah. So oh, that, yes. that the morning would start around 10 a.m. doing a little bit of that, and then uh, right around noon, my manager and I actually we go on a bicycle ride up and down the beach. It's like a 20 mile ride up and down the beach. We get a little acai bowl. This sounds extremely Californian already. Um, and then yeah, there'd probably be some working out. Sunday evening, I would play hockey with yeah. the boys. Um, and then I'd probably go out to dinner with the guys after that and watch some more football before bed. So yeah. What team do you support? I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. Yeah, nice. they're done. They're done though. So we're excited right now. Today we're gonna rock Sheffield and we get to uh, we get to watch some football all the way to Cardiff. So lovely. Yeah, you're in Cardiff tomorrow. I mean, you just said you've been having a really great time over here in the UK. It's been awesome. Yeah. It has, and it's so nice to see you back. I want to kind of go back to last year because mm -hmm. on a wholesome note. It was a great year for Dirty Honey last year, 2022. First time appearing at Download. Of course, that's where we first caught up and chatted. Um, you also did the sports slot with Rival Sons and so many awesome things happened to you last year. And I just wondered, how would you kind of sum up that year in Dirty Honey? Because it seemed like a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, the year started more or less with us touring with Wolfgang Van Halen in the States. And that was like, that was so great. Like, he's such a great artist. and. It was just a great pair of two of the really younger rock bands that are yeah. having something going on right now. Um, sure. So that was a great tour. And then obviously to come over here for the first time in the summer, that's something we've been looking forward to for literally years at this point with COVID and everything slowing everybody down. So, um, you know, you were there. I think the reaction we got at Download couldn't have been better. And it's really sparked a lot of what's happening now, which is like... A, completely sold out UK tour and uh, you know literally everybody's talked about how they saw us at Download or saw us with Rival Sons and sure. I think those billings were they couldn't have been more appropriate um, for us and I, I really can't think of a better way to start our journey in Europe than with you know those things and obviously the Guns N' Roses support dates in other parts of Europe and stuff obviously helps so um, <laughs> yeah it was a good way to be introduced to um you know this this side of the Atlantic yeah there's so many highlights you can take away from that year and I'm hoping that 2023 creates just as much magic for Dirty Honey <laughs> me too <laughs> it'd be tough to beat but um yeah you know we like to set the bar high and we have big expectations not only for ourselves but for the people that you know manage us and do stuff for us and really everybody it's a credit to everybody that works for us they do such a great job but um you know, it's we'd be nowhere without music that people really like and appreciate. And I think sure. at the end of the day, that's the thing you have to remember is that you really have to work hard on the music. And uh, that's got to be top notch or nothing is going to happen. So, yeah, you said you're all about the rock and roll last time we spoke. And I mean, that's just dirty honey all over. Um, one of the things I do want to say, though, is like given how successful 2022 was looking ahead at 2023 I know obviously we're currently you know we're catching up with you on the tour so you've got that in you know in tow and then you're going over to Europe after you finish here in the UK and it's so exciting but do you ever find that there's any pressure when you have a good year with the band to then make that next year even better I mean you've just thrown Guns N' Roses into the mix so yeah. how do you top that <laughs> I mean there are things that we could do I think that I still have um you know, dreams of, you know, supporting artists that I love, whether it's ACDC or Aerosmith or like the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin would be a good one, though I doubt that would ever happen again, even if it's like Page and Plant. But uh, <laughs> yeah, those are like things that would obviously be amazing to do. Um, but more importantly, I think writing some more great music is, you know, that's the be all end all of how far we can take our own journey you know I mean it's it's really in our own hands and 
we've got some really great new stuff that we haven't like played yet on purpose um we've been playing a new song on tour this tour so far which has been going over really well but the the other stuff that's done is kind of like we're like okay we got to save that for a special something like really special you know yeah um Probably the studio would be uh, the, the most special place. But. Good place to start, of yeah. course. I want to talk to you about the new music in a second, but one of the things I want to just ask you about being here back in the UK, of course, is um, a lot of dates have happened so far. Um, Nottingham last night as well. I just want to know the dirt from Dirty Honey. Like, what has been one of the craziest things that you've had happen to you so far on this run of dates? You know, any crazy fan stories that have happened? You know, any bits that you can give a, give us away? <laughs> Man, there was, let's see, oh god, there's been a couple little hiccups already. Um, <laughs> I wasn't too involved with this one, but there was a late night where some happenings took place uh, in Glasgow, I think it was. So I, Had I, to be, I, had to be. Yeah, yeah. The a, Scottish fans. <laughs> what a great town. That was a, they're a rowdy crowd and we love that. So uh, there was a very late night in Glasgow and some people didn't make it to the next, uh, the next city the next day, so... Uh, it was a day what off. What the fuck happened? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I still have questions. I, we went to Edinburgh the, the next day, and uh, I made the train that morning. Um, but yeah, it was like a smattering of people arriving, you know, at different <laughs> times um, all throughout the day, and, and some people didn't make it, so they, they got into some trouble. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's just tour, isn't it? That's what that's you get. Glasgow, that's tour. <laughs> that's Scotland for you. It sure is. I mean, there's a bit of frenzy as well around Dirty Honey here in the UK. I see it all over the social media pages. I see it everywhere. I mean, there's already people like kind of waiting outside at this venue right now. Oh, it's like, what time is it right now? It's like five past six. You okay. guys, the door's not even open until seven. There's people out there already. You know, why do you think there is a frenzy here in the UK and a, a high demand for Dirty Honey, do you, do you think? I just think the UK has always been a great market for, for rock and roll, whether that's, there was a band um, I used to love watching in LA called Vintage Trouble, and I watched their journey over here. Um, you know, being that we were from LA, we were very aware of them and Rival Sons and a few others, and they always like had a great following in the UK and like Germany, um, the Netherlands, like Italy, those are like Spain. They're all like kind of markets that I really appreciate rock and roll and mm. especially the UK. I literally remember seeing Vintage Trouble like on Jules Holland or something and then they just went on a huge like oh, cool. sold out tour. And nice. I was just like, why, why can't we do that? You know, and um, <laughs> so I kind of figured that there'd be a pretty good appetite for rock here still. And, and I can kind of see why when I go around the cities, you know, yeah. like here, it's it seems at least like very blue collar, like yeah. working class, like yeah. hardworking people that want to like have a few beers and listen to some great music. That's it. Yeah. Rock and roll energy all around us. So, exactly. It's, <laughs> it, so it reminds me a lot of, of home in that sense, you know, cities like um, Pittsburgh or Detroit or where it's like these hardworking people that, you know, want to cut loose and... They love it loud and, yeah. and proud and they want to make some noise. So it's, um, yeah, it's refreshing to have some of the like familiar tastes uh, that you would back home. Yeah, of course. And I mean, for you, I think that's quite a nice thing potentially, isn't it? That when you're so far away from home, so far away from everything you know and your loved ones and you are on the road, like, I mean, this tour, California Dreaming Tour, has got like 30 odd dates across mm. the UK and Europe. That's a long time across two months and a, about two, two months and a, and a week or something. Yeah. You know, it's a long stretch on the road away from home. So how do you kind of like keep your energy levels up, your morale up? You know, how what fuels you in those in-between moments between the live shows? Honestly, it's the audience. There's a lot of times, obviously, you're exhausted and you've got to dig deep and give the audience your best. Like, I really... I really appreciate people that come out and pay, you know, with their hard-earned cash for tickets, and they um, they deserve our best. And I try and take care of myself as best as I can, so I can like give them that. And 
Um, I know that's what they expect of me and we all feel that way and carry that burden but I think it's it's probably the hardest for me and the drummer because we have mm. the most physical like yeah sure um, role in the band yeah, yeah so I try and uh, yeah. you know just you got to take care of yourself really yeah. more than anything I can't uh, I can't go on a bender unless <laughs> I have two days off if I have two days off I'll take it but uh, <laughs> we have one planned in Amsterdam so what's uh, your go to tipple here in the UK Tipple. What's a tipple? Ooh, it's like a shot, a drink. Like, what would be oh, your like choice if it's Jack Daniels? No, it's not. Okay, cool. It's, <laughs> it's always, always will be, and always has been tequila. We're a tequila band. Um, you know, California is not too far from Mexico, so we're like not unfamiliar with the great tequila, and uh, it's actually kind of hard to find in the UK, mm. like the really good stuff. The good stuff. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but that's usually we drink tequila before and after every show so i can see why you might have to tone that down a bit then because it's hardly yeah, like yeah. <laughs> you know the, the the go-to drink for like non-chaos <laughs> yeah it's uh, well it's very chaos inducing which is why yeah. we like it so much and we always we always do john and i for sure we always have one or two drinks before the show and then whether or not we're feeling it it might uh, get off the rails a little bit after the show john will get off the rails he needs no um he doesn't need a little shove to, to get off the rails <laughs> but uh yeah i'm sure he's celebrating as well because the news about him being named number one out of top nine of crazy? the new wave of classic rock guitarists from guitarmagazine.com wasn't it guitar.com i know what an achievement that is yeah. inc- insane how do you say that news he loves it of course he loves <laughs> he loves any news about himself but uh <laughs> No, it's well deserved though. He's um, sure. obviously a great artist and a great musician, and you know, there's a reason the two of us like became friends, and we both have this passion for rock and roll, and and it's um, it's really great to see him getting recognized for it because I do think his playing is, especially as a rock and roll guitarist, like his yeah. playing is as good as anybody's out there. So. Insane, insanely good. I want to talk to you about the music because you said that you're working on some new stuff. I have heard, oh, we've got a few party people walking past. Um, I have heard a uh, little birdie on the grapevine has mentioned that you might be working on some new material. I feel like Dirty Honey are very good multitaskers because you're also, you know, not opposed to writing on the road. Yeah. Is that currently a thing? <laughs> yeah we i mean we love doing it um you know we have a song we've been playing you know in the in the live set out here and i think that uh you know just at soundtrack today we were you know messing with that tune even though we've played it now maybe six or seven times there's always new little bits we're trying to throw in there we might change up the arrangement a little bit tonight and you know nice. experiment with it and that's always fun and mm-hmm. um but yeah we did some recording before we came out here actually right before christmas and like that stuff is um it's it's like amazing i'm like really excited to release it but at the same time i have to like restrain myself because we need to like get the rest of it ready which is frustrating and exciting all at the same time so yeah but yeah writing on the road that's a pretty essential part of like being able to finish a record because Mm -hmm. you don't have time anywhere else you know what i mean sure and when you get off the road you everybody kind of wants to take a break from each Mm -hmm. other and you know do whatever it is they want to do and take a week two weeks three weeks a month whatever and then you know finally after that little bit of time away you get reacquainted with the songwriting process and plug in amps and you know making noise again so sure so if i went on your bus right now would there be traces of new material all over the place or is it not like that no (laughs) definitely not on the bus (laughs) um (laughs) no it would be at soundtrack before the show that's when you start testing out a new riff, yeah. a new groove, something like that. Yeah. And, and that's when uh, it really starts to come together. Oh, lovely. I cannot wait. Because obviously the first LP from Dirty Honey is just bloody killer. I love every single track. Heartbreaker 2.0 as well. It's just come out. Love. Yeah. Been yeah. playing that on the show, the new rock show. Oh, yeah. Plug there. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. You know, um, I'm so excited though to hear new stuff from you. And I just wondered if there was much that you could potentially tease to anybody who might be watching about this next chapter for Dirty Honey, you know, musically and what might be in star is it going to be pretty similar along a similar thing so, i mean that's your genre isn't it but yeah what's to come i think um you know so far we've kind of only tapped into maybe that purely rock and roll sound uh, i think the ep and the lp were very similar mm. in that 
they didn't deviate too much in terms of instrumentation and one thing we've always been consistent about is that we all love bands like Zeppelin, Aerosmith, and the Stones, and yeah. they will throw in a mandolin, they'll sure. throw in some harmonica, they have a Wurlitzer, a piano, or acoustic yeah. guitar, stuff like that. So I think this next record is going to have a little bit different instrumentation, a little bit of evolution, maybe sonically just um, some more experimentation in the studio, and I think more than anything we just wanted to have more time in the mm. studio because we only had I think at the most we've only had between the two records 10 10 or 12 days each right and I think you know you'd like to ideally be in there for about a month mm. and just chill and sit and like yeah make it sound literally sound as good yeah. as it can because yes. uh you know, we're all kind of like, okay, it's really good. The songs are great and everything, but I think we can really push the sound of it a little bit. So. Oh, okay. I can't wait. Yeah, me neither. I, I can't <laughs> wait to get in and start hitting buttons, you know, and see what happens. Yeah, just like do that singer thing. I was like just pressing all the knobs yeah, and exactly. going, what, what does this do? What does this do? Let's try this. Let's throw this through a tape machine. Let's play that back in reverse and just see if anything sounds interesting. Yes. And I know when we last spoke at Download, you said one of your favorite things is to keep that rawness when you're recording and yeah. really make sure that like you get in the full rock and roll experience because you said a lot of bands can very easily like you say go on the computer I remember you mentioning this and perfect everything mm -hmm. and what you guys are all about is imp it's perf perfecting the imperfections that's yeah. the line you use yeah. is that still very much the motto this time around for Dirty Honey do you think? Yeah for sure I mean we don't ever like we're never going to use auto tune or like edit it to death I think that takes away from the soul and that's what like a lot of the rock music that's why a lot of the rock music today I feel like doesn't really resonate with people and yeah. it's because it's missing the thing that makes it raw and authentically rock and roll and that's like you said some of those imperfections are magic mm -hmm. and there's a great part in Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith where Steven Tyler was saying he was using a vibra slap and he it's like this brrr sound sort of oh, thing oh cool and he broke it <laughs> In, during the take and they just like left it in there because it sounded cool and like that's a complete mistake that could have been totally wiped out by the Pro Tools era yeah. um, that like all of a sudden became an iconic piece and an iconic song you know for sure. their catalog so um, yeah I think maintaining the soulfulness the mistakes whether you want to call them mistakes or not like I think that's just a big part of yeah being a rock and roller so for sure Mac I love that and I'm very very excited like I say to hear new Dirty Honey stuff cannot wait to see the set tonight just before I let you go um I want to ask you if you're an emoji user when you go on the phone are you are you much for emojis is that like your vibe <laughs> is that my vibe um there's a point to this by the way <laughs> I do use the one where it's like the guy like going like this, you know? Okay. Where they're like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Um, that one's good. Okay, uh, wait. The wait. upside down happy face guy. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. So this is my question to you. If you had to use three emojis to sum up the Dirty Honey UK tour it so far, which three would you pick? You're going to have to describe them because, you know. Well, there's the dancing guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love him. That's one for sure. That one. That's the totally, Saturday night. It's just me. Um... <laughs> There's the guy with like the tongue out to the side. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't I know. know what that means, <laughs> but it feels like. But you're feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> that's another one. We'll use the like exploding rocket ship too, because that's what this feels like. A little bit feels like a, a rocket taking off into outer space into the unknown of uh, <laughs> of the rock and roll universe or something. Yeah. Love so it. we'll go with those three. I love it. Well, I'm going to chuck in the honey pot because we've got to, haven't oh, we? Yeah. Come on, what an yeah. amateur. You forgot the one that actually makes the <laughs> band name relevant on Emoji Land. <laughs> our, uh, our social guy uses the devil, the purple devil oh, face it's thing. It's the best one. I mean, that just can mean all sorts of things. Carnage, yeah. chaos, cheeky. Yeah, <laughs> he's very cheeky, isn't he? Yeah. He's very cheeky. <laughs> well, on a final note, before I let you go, have you got a message that you would like to send out to your lovely UK and European audiences? Have you got anything you want to let them know, say to them, wave to them? We'll say, uh, well, not only, obviously, thank you for all the support, obviously, on this run. It's been nothing short of magical, but... Um, yeah, keep your ear to the grindstone. We're going to be coming back real, real soon. So, 
Oh, I love that. That's yeah. so exciting. Mark, thank you so much for chatting to me. Pleasure to see you, to again. See you again. And uh, it's been great catching up and I cannot wait to see the show later on. Dirty honey, everybody. Oh, <laughs>